Oh man, I really hope this is the last video in this series. This thing has got to pass smog. So this is video number three of trying to get the YJ to pass smog. If you look at my previous videos, you'll see at first I wasn't concerned about it at all. Did a tune up, worked out great. Um, still failed though. The second video we did a bunch of stuff that I thought for sure was gonna fix it. It was mostly sensors and things like that. We smogged it again. It actually got worse somehow. How? I have no idea. Then we decided to get serious and um, I've been looking at all kinds of stuff. Basically what I did is I took it to the exhaust shop and I said look I'm just gonna need a new cat I know the cat's bad it's been long enough it probably just needs a new one so let's just get that thing welded on there and I said while it's here can you look at everything and just tell me if there's any leaks anywhere or you see any cracks in the exhaust anything like that so we can just get this all knocked out at once and you'll see when I get to that point there is a crack in the exhaust manifold I can't see it with everything on the engine um, he was able to check it out with some mirrors and stuff I guess and and the exhaust manifold's cracked. So I got a new one. We got to take that exhaust manifold off. And unfortunately, we have to take off pretty much everything from the engine. So it is going to be a little bit of a job to get it done. But hopefully with the new cat and the new manifold, we should be good to go. So here we go. Let's get into this. So this is the easy part of working on the exhaust manifold or the intake manifold or anything like that. Uh, it's just taking stuff off and the cool thing about this engine is that most of the stuff can't really get mixed up with anything else so it's easy to see where it goes again. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game. So the Jeep's got about 140 on the engine and I would think that this hadn't been changed out. From where I was looking at it, up from the top and then kind of at the side right here, I really just couldn't see anything. It didn't look like there was a crack anywhere on here, but when I took it to the exhaust shop, they found this barely see that crack right there we flip it over the rest of it actually looks pretty good it's just down there at that collector it's like a hairline crack that just goes all the way around that's enough to destroy a cat i guess so here is everything torn off the engine and i've gone ahead and scraped most of the gasket off of here and then you can see right here these square ones the intake that was the dirtiest part and look at them they're not even that dirty i barely cleaned them out there was not really even any carbon in there and besides just you know some of the oil and the residue do on here this thing is super clean i think i mean i haven't torn apart a ton of these it's like my third one but this looks really good i'm impressed with how clean this thing is this is the most amazing part down here the exhaust flange that actually came off those bolts both came off the exhaust manifold came off of here i am super surprised that that happened that was the part i really wasn't looking forward to and it worked so now i got to get my new exhaust manifold i'm gonna match it up with the old one just to make sure everything looks like it's gonna bolt up and i'll start putting all this mess back together Here's the intake manifold here. This all looks pretty clean too. Once again, there's like some oil and dirt up here. You can just take a vacuum to most of this, but all this looks really good, which is super surprising when it's a vehicle with that many miles on it. And that really has just been off-roaded its whole life. So here's the new exhaust manifold here. This thing actually looks like it's a way better quality than the one we took off, which I'm guessing is the OEM one. Not a surprise there. I actually got this one from AutoZone. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it was. I'll put it down in the description if I can find it again. Just match this one up with all of the exhaust ports on the stock one it matches so we're gonna start putting this thing on oh my gosh what a process to get this off it can look a little bit intimidating to start doing all this stuff and tearing your engine apart it's really not difficult you are gonna get some busted knuckles you're gonna get some dirty hands and you're probably gonna get a little frustrated with a lot of the bolts that are on there but it is something you can do at home if you're like me and your money is not as valuable as your time you might want to take this in now that I'm like halfway through this i'm kind of glad i just decided to do it but it's taking so much of my weekend up i kind of wish i would have taken it to a shop or something to have them do it but who knows how much they would cost or if they would even do a good job on it so we're just going to continue we got to get this thing ready to go all right look who's out of the garage just took the jeep for a spin after we got everything buttoned up i'll show you how we're looking right now so everything looks pretty much the same except our new manifold in there is nice and shiny got a little bit of smoke while that thing was heating up but that's all good 
I didn't take any time to clean anything up because I'm just so focused on getting this thing running so it can pass smog. Because right now this can't pass smog, so we're trailering it everywhere. And I need this thing to be able to drive on the road on its own. I mean, I can tow it, but where's the fun in that? We want to drive these on the road too. But that's not the only new stuff. We've got right here our brand new Magnaflow cat on there. See, you got some nice welds on there looking pretty clean. It's all really changed. We still have the same muffler back there. This is the real key to passing. I'm thinking we could without doing anything else we could, probably could have passed with a new cat but we don't want to destroy this one because they are not cheap here in california so we got everything else fixed now it's time for this thing to do its magic i'm feeling pretty optimistic about the smog i was last time too but i feel like we've just hit so many things now that it's got to be good to go and we have the new cat on there which will cover up a lot of problems if we still had any but i really just don't think we do we got the cat replaced and the guy said it was thrashed it was time for a new cat anyways so i don't want to be driving it if the engine is having any issues after especially after we did all that work i just want to make sure everything's working how it should be so we've got our smog appointment tomorrow i hope it passes we can go to dmv get all the registration stuff fixed up for this guy actually working on the stuff i want to do the off-road stuff making it look cool making it getting ready for the trails part of what i want to do is get some 37s on this jeep i'm not really sure what tire i'm going to go with yet right now i'm leaning towards the milestar patagonia like what we've got on the samurai and then in the meantime we'll take these bfg all terrains throw them on the samurai these are 33 1050s these are 31 1050, so it'll be a slightly bigger tire for the Samurai and be just in time to do some off-roading at the hammers. But like I said, we've got a bunch of stuff counting on all of this happening, you know? So one thing has to happen for the next. If not, Samurai how it is, working on the Jeep. Break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame. So I took the Jeep to the smog shop and dropped it off and I decided to go next door and get myself a burrito. While I'm over there, the guy from the smog shop comes over and says, we got a problem. And I'm like, ah man, what could it be now? And he says, it's not a big one. This one should be pretty easy. The EVAP canister has a, uh, basically like a fuel vapor line. It's got a leak in it and it's got electrical tape around it and all that. It's, it's one of the ones I missed, I guess. So I went to go replace that and just drove to a Napa, got some fuel line, heated that hose up the best I could by putting it on the exhaust manifold so it could actually slide over this huge part on the EVAP canister and uh, took it back to the smog place and it passed. It passed with flying colors. Everything looked really good. I'm just so stoked to be done with that this has been a long process um, it's never fun getting a new vehicle and then like the first thing you do is just try to get it to you know meet standards so you can register it uh, it's it's horrible it's a horrible feeling and i know a lot of people want to give up there's a lot of people going through this right now with their jeep or any vehicle and if you, if you really care about it you just got to keep going uh, it's not cheap in the first video i mentioned i was starting with the simplest thing first like just a big tune-up in the second one we got the kind of expensive things with all the sensors and all that and then in this video yeah we had to go with the cat the cat is expensive to replace and it's not just the cat but it's also having the exhaust shop put that on there it adds up um, then the smog itself all of that a bunch of little things so we got a really good deal on the jeep so i'm not that worried about it but we ended up putting um, a little bit under 1500 into the jeep to get all of this stuff done that's a lot of money um, like i said the majority of that's the cat i think it ended up being like 800 dollars to get all of that um, cat and welding stuff done. It, it's ridiculous, it sucks, but um, it's a good Magnaflow cat. I think it's gonna last a long time. And as long as we can keep this engine running good, and everything in our exhaust intact, I think that cat's gonna last us so we won't have to worry about that for a long time. So now, what's next? Well, this is the cool part. And if you saw this on jack stands with no tires, you'd probably go, uh-oh, what's happening? No, this is actually a good thing. So I took the wheels and tires off the Jeep, went to a shop and I got them swapped on the Samurai wheels. So uh, in an upcoming video, we're gonna check that out and we're gonna put 33s on the Samurai. But until then, we've gotta work on some steering issues and some other little things on the jeep and then the next thing we're going to do is figure out our uh, wheel and tire situation so the wheels that it has on it are 15 inch diameter and 8 inch wide which is okay the problem is it's hard to find 37 inch tires with a 15 inch wheel that are road friendly you know super swamper makes a ton of cool sizes on 15s but a lot of those tires are great off-road and they don't do too well on road we need this thing to drive on road 
So I think what I'm gonna do with this Jeep and probably a lot of my other projects from now on is I'm gonna just start doing polls and I'm gonna list like uh, three, two or three options of the things I'm willing to do. And then I'm just gonna have you guys vote on it. And whatever you guys decide, uh, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go with what you guys wanna do. So um, the probably the next thing is gonna be these wheels. Because we don't need to buy any new wheels, I think we're gonna save some money there. And then now we can focus on doing like a beadlock system on here. So I think I'm gonna do a DIY beadlock for the Wrangler. And then uh, you guys can vote on the pattern of the beadlock. Then we'll go to the tires and we're gonna start voting on what tire we should do. Uh, it's gonna be a 37, 1250 on a 15 inch wheel. So those are the criteria that have to be met. There's a bunch of tires that have that. Well, not a bunch. There's a few different tires that have that. So that's what we're looking for. Well guys, thanks for sticking with me through this. Of all the videos I've ever done, this one is giving me the most feedback. I have so many people asking me about this Jeep and how the smog's going because I know a lot of you guys are going through this too, but don't give up. You can do it. I just showed you it can be done. One big takeaway from this is um, I think I was right on doing the cheapest things first. Like you can get a new cat and the cat will help you pass smog, but then if there's a problem with your engine or your exhaust or something like that, it's just going to burn that cat up. And then the next time you try to smog it, you're going to have this issue again. And if you're in a smog free state where you don't have to do that, that's great for being able to register. There could be something seriously wrong with your engine or your exhaust. And if your engine's running lean for a really long time, you know, you're going to destroy it. And then if you care at all, uh, you know, it is pumping out a bunch of nastiness out into the environment. Feels good to have that part taken care of. But guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you want to see where we're going to go with this Wrangler and watch us build this thing up and wheel it and do other install videos, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and following us on this adventure. See you guys next time.